Hello everybody, it is Michael here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about what's next for the team that got the number three pick in the 2021 draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer, bang, bang, it's good, Doncic wins the game at the buzzer. What you preach, I guess about it talking trash, uh, uh, now they want to pose with me like, uh, uh, not so fast. <laughs> First, let's talk about who's on the roster. I want to start off with one of my favorite young players in the NBA, Darius Garland. After being one of the worst players in the NBA in his first season, he was amazing in his second year. I feel like a lot of people did not put nearly enough context into Darius Garland's struggles in his rookie season. He was bad. To be honest, he was straight up bad, but he barely even got to play in college. So he was basically taking a leap from high school to the NBA, and that is an incredibly hard thing to do. But in a second year where he clearly adjusted to the NBA game, he was much better, averaging 17.4 points, 6.1 assists on great splits, nearly shooting. 40% from three. He was fantastic for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Really influ- Really influ- He looks like he pronounces R's as W's. You're correct, my brother. It is called a speech impediment. I have a tongue thrust. I don't have a lisp. It's called a tongue thrust. Really improved that floater game, which was a big part of his game this year. Really improved that playmaking as well. And I think he is the best young player on this roster going forward, which might be a bit controversial, but I'm just super high on Darius Garland. And I think he's a really, really good building block going forward. Let's talk about the player who played alongside Darius Garland in the backcourt, Colin Sexton. He averaged 24 points in this last season at only the age of 22 years old. But with contract extension talks coming up and with them potentially being in a position to grab a guard, they are put in a very weird situation with Colin Sexton because he's clearly an incredibly talented young player. I mean, averaging 24 points while being only 22 years old is not a feat that many others have done. He also expanded his playmaking game. It's still something that's not a big strength of his, but he's improving, and that's all that matters, especially with him being more of an off guard. Him averaging 4.4 assists per game, very solid. He's continuing to be a very solid three-point shooter. I think at this point, we none of us can say it's a fluke. Like so many people have said, uh, his shooting was a fluke and that he just had hot streaks at the end of the year. No, Colin Sexton is just a very good three-point shooter. He's very, very impactful on the offensive side of the ball. Not a great defender, mostly due to his size. He puts in a lot of effort on the defensive side of the ball, but the issue is there's only a, a, such a high ceiling you can go to defensively when your backcourt is Darius Garland and Colin Sexton. And I think that's not to the fault of either of them. It's just the situation that they are in. So no matter if Colin Sexton is on this roster or he's on a different one going forward, he is a valuable asset regardless. And I think some of the people who have made trades for him are completely completely underrating what his value would be. You're not going to trade just like Taylor Horn Tucker and a couple of picks and get Colin Sexton. No, Colin Sexton is really, really good. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Last year, they drafted defensive wing uh, Isaac Okoro, who had a solid rookie season. He wasn't anything special and had some of the issues that I expected. He did not shoot the three ball very well, but I do still think he has a lot of upside for this team and he really fits with what they're trying to go with going forward, which is getting a bunch of guys who fit alongside either of the young guards depending on who they choose to build uh, around going forward. He is someone who uh, is a very solid slasher. I like his playmaking upside and I want to see him continue to get more playmaking opportunities and he was one of the best uh, rookie defenders he consistently played great defense on the other team's best perimeter player and that's what I love about him most is his versatility you can just put him on any one of the other team's uh, best perimeter players and he'll do a good enough job which is a very very valuable asset 
Uh, he did a great job of guarding Trey Young one game. He was put on guys like Luka Doncic. He's always going to be getting the other team's best opposing player. And that really helps those two guards hide them a bit defensively and let them put more energy in on the offensive side of the ball where they flourish. So I do like what he brings to this team going forward. And I think he has a, had a solid rookie season. And I'm just excited to see what the future is for Isaac Okoro. They were also able to make a fantastic midseason trade, picking up Jared Allen for almost nothing. That was one of the biggest steals I've ever seen, and he was a great, great player for them in the 2021 season. But he's in a similar situation to Colin Sexton. There are extension talks coming up, and there's someone who plays his position that they may potentially draft. He's yet an uh, again, a person who I think no matter if he's on this team going forward, if he's on another team, he's a valuable asset. If he gets a sign and trade, someone will be able and willing to give up significant value for a player the caliber of Jared Allen. Someone who can average a double-double and be a great interior uh, protector and someone who has shown an ability to maybe expand his range a little bit uh, to the mid-range to the three as well is a really exciting player to add to any team going forward. So again, I think no matter what, he is going to be a valuable asset, and he was very, very good for Cleveland. Again, such a fantastic trade. Picking up someone the caliber of him for almost nothing was elite stuff by them. Just to quickly mention another player in their young core who I do like, Dylan Windler. He's someone who I think has potential to be a nice shooting wing off the bench. Uh, nothing more than that, but I do think he can be just a solid uh, piece to the young core going forward. He was the 26th pick at the end of the day. You don't expect too much from him, uh, but I do think he can be a solid young piece on this team. And I'm excited for him to potentially be a nice bench piece going forward for them. Now let's have a discussion about the number three pick. This is a very, very strange and odd situation for them to be in. I do not know what I would do if I was them. Because no matter what, you're going to land someone who plays at one of your three best young players' positions. You're going to land either Jalen Green, who is a shooting guard, who is not super great defensively, even though he does have upside, or Evan Mobley. It's all about what the Rockets do. So let's say first, if you land Jalen Green, if the Rockets take Evan Mobley at number two and you get Green going to Cleveland, that is a very odd situation because I feel like him and Colin Sexton would clash a lot because they have similar play styles for sure. I think Jalen Green is a bit more of a guy who plays better without the ball, but they are both scoring guards who are best with the ball in their hands. And that's not a problem. But when you already have someone like Darius Garland, who is a scoring guard as well, it really creates a lot of conflict. And it makes you have to trade Colin Sexton. And again, especially with contract extension talks coming up, this would be the best time to do a Colin Sexton trade. Only issue is, a Colin Sexton trade is one of the most challenging things in the NBA. I spent like 20 minutes looking at potential Colin Sexton trades, and I was lost because I either felt like they were getting not nearly enough value for the player of Colin Sexton, or it just didn't make that much sense on either side. The only trade, and this is one that I made that I liked, was a Colin Sexton for Jeremy Grant swap, where it would be Colin Sexton and Torian Prince going for Jeremy Grant. Obviously, there would be other details. I'm sure there would be picks on either side, but this would be in the situation that Killian Hayes doesn't work super well with Cade Cunningham, and they want more of a scoring guard alongside Cade. That is the only situation I can really think of. I mean, maybe a Ben Simmons trade as well. Maybe that would be something that would happen. Uh, I do think he would fit solidly into this team. I would have some worries about him and Okoro's uh, shooting, but I do think they could make one of the best perimeter defenses in the NBA and then have Jared Allen uh, on the back end. That would be exciting. It's just really hard to think of Colin Sexton trades. And then if uh, Jalen Green is off the board at number two, uh, then I think it does make it a little bit more simple because you get Evan Mobley, Maybe you try out the whole Twin Towers things, but I think Evan Mobley is a center. And then you do a Jared Allen side and trade. It sucks. It really does because Jared Allen was great for them. 
but you are going to end up getting more value than what you traded for Jared Allen, which is a W. I don't know what team Jared Allen would go to. I have no clue, to be completely honest, but I'm sure there's plenty of teams that would want him. Maybe a team like the Dallas Mavericks. I don't know exactly what they would throw you, but they do have some money and they have a need at the center position. So I think that could be a really good fit. He could be a lob catcher alongside Luka Doncic. Uh, they do have some solid young pieces over there like Jalen... Uh, they do have some solid young pieces over there like Josh Green, not Jalen Green. <laughs> Uh, and I do think they could make something right there. And I'm sure there's plenty of other teams that would want him as well. Maybe if the Kings lose Rashawn Holmes, they go after uh, Jared Allen. I really don't know, again, where the exact trade is, but there will be something there on the table for sure. And then you either have two directions. So you get Jalen Green and Darius Garland in that backcourt, which I think is a really nice fit. And then you try and trade... Uh, Sexton for some wing. I don't know who that wing is going to be. Again, I like the Jeremy Grant fit, but that's really the only one I could think of given the circumstances. So something like that if you get Jalen Green. I think that's a great young roster going forward with a lineup of Garland, Green, Okoro, whatever wing you would trade for, and Jared Allen. But if you land Evan Mobley, then you have Garland, Sexton, uh, Okoro, whatever you would trade for Jared Allen and then uh, Evan Mobley. I think either of those directions, you have a lot of young talent on this roster. And then it's about filling out the other guys. I like what Larry Nance Jr. brings to this team. He is a very, very solid role player. He is a fantastic defender, great locker room guy. Maybe they trade him, but I just do like what he brings to this team. And he seems to really like Cleveland. Kevin Love is obviously a bit of a tough situation with him being someone who's on a massive contract that I don't see anyone trading for. Uh, I see him just playing one more year and them probably buying him out, which is tough, but it is what it is. It's it's a bad contract at the end of the day. Uh, Seti Osman or Jetty, I don't know how you say it exactly, is someone who I would try and trade. I just don't think he's that good, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of him at all. And I know a lot of Cavs fans aren't big fans of him either. I just really do think you need to fill out the rest of the roster. You are going to have some cap space, which is nice, depending on, again, what happens with Jared Allen and whatever trades you make. But even if you make moves that bring you where you don't have much salary cap, at least in 2023, you'll have some cap space. You only have uh, 67 million dollars guaranteed kevin love will be on an expiring contract torian prince will be off the roster uh, maybe you traded guys like uh, jetty osmond by then you'll still have garland you'll still have a coro and then hopefully you're just going to be able to fill out the roster with some solid veterans maybe some young players you get a steal maybe in the second round maybe trade up for a late first round pick and i think you just continue to get shooters get defenders uh, and then just build a solid roster around the core that you have because I do think the core is absolutely there, especially with you getting the third pick. Maybe you even trade down from the third pick. I don't know. Uh, I love the fit of Scotty Barnes there. Uh, I like the fit of Jonathan Kaminga there. Maybe they think trading down is the best option. I don't think that's a bad idea, especially if you could get, let's say, 5 and 8 from Orlando. Say they are all about getting Jalen Green, getting their shooting guard of the future. I think that's a fantastic move for them. They have a lot of avenues that they can go in, and honestly, I think any of them are solid. They just need to continue to develop the talent they have on this roster and make smart moves at the top. And I think the Cleveland Cavaliers are a solid team going forward with young building blocks it really just depends who's there for that third pick and everything about their future is all about what happens on july 29th the 2021 nba draft that has been the video it's been michael peace out